Hey, so can the Yankees play the Blue Jays like every day? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. I'm Steve Granato, and this podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Create an account on the Game Time app and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm pinch hitting today for. I guess producer, co-host, I don't know what you want to call them today. Stacy Gatsoulias, how you doing, Stace? I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, Stacy couldn't make it to the end of the season without oh. going on the IL because that's just how the season is. Even Stacy got hurt. Yep. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's, I think it's a sinus infection, but it's it's affecting everything. So yeah, I don't feel well tonight. So mm. Yeah, it's okay. I was, you know, I was day to day a couple of days ago. So now, you know, day to day at the end of the season. We're not <laughs> retroing you. We're not 15 day yet. We're good. We're all yeah. right. Um, Stacey's gonna hang out today. I'll, I'm gonna take the lead. It's gonna be a little different here today. But thanks so much for clicking on the show, regardless. Um, we have a preview of the final game in Toronto. Of course, we also need to talk about some news regarding the Yankees audit. Are we buying on this yet? We'll talk about it here in just a second. Stacy first. My God, Garrett Cole last night. Look, we knew what Garrett Cole brings to the table. We've seen it all year. We've seen it for years and years and years. But to go out with a complete game shutout on two hits, no walks, five strikeouts, his third complete game of the season, uh, or his uh, his second, third for the Yankees this season. I mean, there, there's... The only way that could have been better is if those two hits didn't happen. That's literally the only thing that could have changed there. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Brandon Belt had both of them. So really just one batter, two hits. So that's pretty amazing. Um, You know, the Blue Jays have to kind of be panicking slightly because they've been shut down in two straight games against, uh, you know, I mean, Michael King and Garrett Cole are good pitchers, but you're going to be facing good pitchers in the playoffs. And they have to be panicking a little bit because they just have not looked good at all on offense the last two nights. Cole wasn't his normal, you know, dominant self. He didn't strike out like 13 people, but he was in control that entire game. And it was just so much fun to watch knowing that it was his last start. His parents were there. His wife was there. And it was just like, oh, just to see him shove like that was just so great. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, the the knuckle curve uh, over the last, I put September. I'm going to go ahead and earmark it in September. The knuckle curve has just been maybe his best pitch. Mm -hmm. It's it's got so much drop. It's got uh, so much separation. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful secondary pitch that he's really... Uh, shined with here recently to go along with that fastball. The cutter has been working really well lately as well. I mean, the way he finished the season is is really, really incredible. Um, you know, he started like how he ended. It, it's really great to see. Uh, it was his eighth complete game of his career, six of which have happened with the Yankees. Um, he was super efficient, uh, even despite, you know, a couple of early deep counts. He had a couple 2-2, a couple 3-2 counts in the early couple innings. But he yeah. really got, you know, got that under control. It was super weak contact, a couple broken bats. Like, it was everything and more for Garrett Cole last night. What I liked was in his postgame interview, he credited Ben Rortvet, and he also credited Flo for some defense. He's like, you know, the guys playing defense helped me out, too. He's like, it was just really, it was a good performance. And, you know... Meredith kind of teased him with, uh, you know, the Cy Young thing. And he kind of was like, mm. like, he didn't want to say anything, obviously, because you don't want to not jinx it. But, you know, you don't want to be obnoxious about it. But 2.65 ERA, 14, I mean, come on, he, he's got to win the Cy Young. And if he doesn't. Done. It's done. I mean, it's done. I mean, it's done. It's done. I mean, we've been done. saying it. We've been saying it for like three weeks. But he really to have this performance in Toronto on the road against a tough team. And just, I mean, complete game. And, you know, he had like 72 pitches in the seventh inning. And I thought, oh, he's definitely going the whole time. They're not oh, yeah. going to take Oh, he would have thrown 115, gonna... 120. Yeah. Like, it didn't yeah. matter. It didn't matter. It does, I mean, game. you know, he's not preparing for the uh, playoffs, so he might as well just go all out. But, yeah, it was uh, very enjoyable. Every time I looked up, I saw a ball in the air, like, you know, barely doing anything. It was just, yeah. what a great game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned Esteban Florial, great catch in center field and had a couple of nice plays. Uh, mm-hmm. Very similar to a play, maybe the, one of the best plays of the season in 2022 when he was with the Rail Riders. Made a very, very similar catch uh, at uh, PNC Field in Musick. So uh, that, as soon as I saw that ball go up, 
I was like, oh, Flo's got that. Don't worry. I've seen this happen before. I've, I've read this book before. Uh, great. But Stace, maybe we buried the lead here. Mm-hmm. Aaron Judge, another two homer game, drives in four, seventh multi homer game this season, his second against Toronto. And I wanted to, every time Judge starts going off on these tangents, man, I, I, I got to bring this up. Without the injuries this year, my gosh, what we would have been able to see. And even with them, what we've still been able to see. He's really yeah. caught on fire here le- lately. Stacy, 37 bombs in 445 plate appearances. That's one every 12 plate appearances. Last season, that was one in 11.2. Yeah. So, I mean, he obviously had been a little slow here recently until the last couple of days. But now at this pace, he... he is he going to get to 40 states? Is he going to hit three more in the next, what is it, four games? It's possible. It really is. Um, you know, no offense to Kansas City, but they're playing Kansas City. And if they're playing him because they said he doesn't need surgery in the offseason, so I don't see why they would sit him down. They might as well just let him finish it out and see if he can get to 40. Um, he's just really unbelievable. You know, it's the second against Toronto in Toronto, may I add, because that's yes. – he likes playing <laughs> in Rogers Center. Like, he – he relishes it. Like he just, he loves it. Um, no breaking of any maple leafs this time. Um, but yeah, it's just fun to watch him when he goes off like this. And it's just a, it's just a bummer thinking what if, what could have been if he didn't crash into the wall at Dodger stadium. Yeah. It's, it's really, uh, it is a question that will never get answered, unfortunately. And hopefully next season he's at the same toward pace. I have no reason to believe he wouldn't be, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's really, really something else. And he's won six, nothing behind these two incredible performances. I mean, both of them top notch. And like I said, Stace, can we just keep playing the blue Jays here? Cause this is, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Well, the Yankees won the season series with that. You know, there's no way they can lose it now. Cause if they do lose tomorrow, they'd be uh seven and six against the blue Jays. So out of 13 and you know, I know it's not a happy season for everyone because they're not play- making the playoffs, but it's always good to beat <laughs> your rivals in the division. And uh, they were one of the rivals that they didn't have issues with this season. <laughs> yeah, and let alone that, you said they if they do lose, even if they lose out, Stace, guaranteed non-losing season. Yep. 81 wins now on the year. So that that is secure at bare minimum. If they end up losing the next four, they will finish at 81 and 81. So They're not, though. They're, they're not going to do that. They'll, they'll be fine. They'll win at least one game against Kansas. Well, I mean, hey, Houston didn't. That's true. But Houston's been, yeah, the playoff picture is getting really, um, you know, I like that the Yankees are kind of stopping the Blue Jays from <laughs> doing stuff right now. That's fun because uh, last year the Yankees celebrated winning the AL East in Toronto. And, um, you know, one of the Blue Jays beat writers was mentioning that before the series like oh you know this time the Blue Jays can celebrate getting into the playoffs I'm like yeah getting into the playoffs is definitely the same as winning a division <laughs> in yeah. someone else's stadium <laughs> yeah 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 wild card doesn't exactly have the exact same. second in the wild card doesn't exactly have the same mustard to it yeah Stacy's last few days here as we kind of wind down this season obviously we're gonna give you a preview <laughs> of tonight's game and then you know ultimately say goodbye but we won't have a whole ton of time to preview this weekend so i mean now that cole's finished his last start i mean i guess really the last thing is seeing if judge can get to 40 and and one more michael king outing maybe frankie montas might pitch this weekend potentially if finally get to see frankie montas i don't know stace it's uh it look I know there's a lot of Yankees fans out there. A lot of them watching this, listening to this and are like, how can you be happy? How can you be praising these things? And, you know, look, a, it's our job. B. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta find something. You gotta yeah. find something like, look, I, I know it's been bad. I know it's been tough. I get it. I get it guys. It sucks, but the Yankees are playing better right now. And yeah. that's really all you can get. Because there's nothing else you can get out of this right now. You know, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of, like, the Yankees Instagram comments and and reply tweets and stuff like that are just like, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Like, well, what do you want them to do? Go out there and lose every day? Because you would definitely care if they were losing every day. I guarantee you that. Right. Yeah. It's funny. They have, like, one of the best records in baseball, like, the last month. It's like, great. Good job doing that. Too late. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, I just think that... um, I think they they announced the starters for the weekend. It's going to be Radon, Schmidt, King. So King's finishing the season, and we'll get to see how he uh, makes his last start before, you know, spring training 2024. Our number two, 
<laughs> it's going to be the case, man. It's going to be the case. <laughs> Let us know how you're feeling about Garrett Cole's Cy Young chances. I'm done with the Garrett Cole Cy Young conversation. I pushed the conversation to unanimous at this point. I don't care, man. I think he's unanimous. I think there's no question that Garrett Cole is the Cy Young. But I want to know what you have to uh, say about it in the comment section down below here on the YouTube side. Tomorrow's our Fan Mail Friday episode, and it's our last one for a couple of weeks. So make sure to get your questions in now. It's your last chance. Reply to that pinned comment here on the YouTube side. Give us your questions. You got one more chance during this season. We're going to take a little bit of a break on Fan Mail Friday for a week after that. So make sure you get those questions in to guarantee answers. Join Subtext. Episode description has all the information. And we're going to be making some changes to Subtext too here as they moved into off-season coverage. We still got five days a week, guys. Don't worry. We're still here for you even when the season ends. All right. Let's step aside and we come back. Yankees audit details starting to come out a little bit. What does that mean? We'll explain. Stacy and I think buying baseball tickets shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. And look, you only have a few days left to catch a regular season baseball game, so hurry to game time now. They take all the work out of buying tickets, so all you do is tap a few times, and you're in. I used it a lot this season. Honestly, really enjoyed it. It was seamless you can forget about planning months in advance game time has deals on tickets right up to the just the moments before first pitch and you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets which i've used and uh, for other events too like football basketball concerts comedy theater all that good stuff and with their lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection game time is the best place to buy tickets in just a matter of seconds snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app you can create an account and use the code locked on mlb for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply again that's locked on mlb that code for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Back now on Locked On, Yankees, our second segment. Hey, only a couple of games left this season, so make sure you download that SiriusXM app and listen to every Yankees game. And just by the way, if you're a fan of any other sport, any other team, it's all on SiriusXM too. I use it for Lakers basketball. You guys know I'm a huge Lakers fan. Uh, hey, coming up tomorrow, don't forget, it's our last Fan Mail Friday. Hit subscribe so you don't miss that and get your questions in. Stacy, there was an a interesting article in the... Uh, in NJ.com, written by Bob Clappish, titled, As Yankees Season Winds Down, Massive Changes Are Coming. A little ominous, a little, little doom and gloomy, a little kind of getting into spooky season here. Let's calm down. Uh, I wanted to pull some quotes. Get what, We haven't talked about this. We briefly texted about it, so I do, I'm do. i curious what you think about this, Stace. Um, mm -hmm. I have some feelings on this. I'm gonna, I have two quotes that we're going to pull here. This first one uh, says, Um... The investigation will begin in early October, although interestingly, the company conducting the audit will not recommend personnel changes. The analysis will instead focus on process and how the Yankees compare to other clubs. The categories will include the success and failure of the Bombers' trades in the last decade, the shakeout of the draft picks, uh, the international draft, the number of games and dollars lost to injuries, and the state of minor league player development. Now, Stacy, this audit thing, where where are you at with this? When they first started talking about it, I thought it was kind of maybe just like for show, maybe like, oh, we're going to do an investigation. I thought it was going to be a little bogus, to be frank. Yeah. Still could be, to be real. Right. <laughs> but how are you feeling about this now that we're starting to learn more about how the process is going to play out? I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's really going to be interesting. I feel like they're going to see, you know, because it's a, um impartial company, right? So it's going to be someone coming in and doing this and looking at stuff. And I think the Yankees are in for a rude awakening. Awakening, Like they know how things haven't gone that great for them in certain aspects, but I feel like this outside company is going to come in and it's going to be like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We need to change some stuff. I hope that's what happens because they can't keep going the way they're going because the fans can't handle it anymore. And um, it's just you'll keep seeing people with fire cashman shirts on at games if they don't change things soon. I have a few thoughts on this first uh, quote we're pulling here, Stacey. Mm -hmm. One, we've known about this for a little while. I don't know the exact date is when the details started to come out about this or that the news happened that this was going to mm -hmm. happen. 
I don't know why they're waiting till October. This in general, they could have been doing this for a while. Uh, no. <laughs> just, just throw that out there. So the miners have been done. Like Tampa's been done for like two weeks. So yeah. I, I'm just saying you could have started on the minor league stuff already. But whatever. Neither here nor there. I've been thinking about this for a while, and I've been trying to wrap my re- head around how I wanted to say it on the show. Mm-hmm. And this comes from a place of love. So let me let's just go ahead and start there because this is going to be some kind of harsh words. Mm-hmm. The Yankees are no longer the evil empire. They're no, no. longer the Yankees. You know what I mean? Nope. They are not feared in Major no. League Baseball. I That's just not the case. With you. <laughs> There's just not the case anymore. Yeah. And I think the Yankees in this process are hopefully, we'll see how it all plays out, coming to grips with that notion and being honest with themselves, which I think it's certainly time to do. The rest of the league is caught up. Think of it in college baseball terms, right? Vanderbilt for years was the pitching powerhouse of college baseball. No ifs, ands, or buts. It wasn't even close. wasn't even close. Ole Miss, UCLA, USC. Every SEC school, Arkansas, all these schools are catching up, if not have caught up. And Vanderbilt's suddenly not the favorite anymore. Yes, they're still a very good program, and they do great. They scout well. They know how to develop their pitchers. But it's not so cut and dry. It's not so black and white. And that's, I feel, a pretty comparable, especially in the baseball world, to where it comes to the Yankees and the rest of the league. Everyone else is caught up. Houston's caught up. I mean, well, the Dodgers I gonna... have surpassed. The Dodgers yeah. have surpassed them. Like there, there are a lot of things. A lot of things the Yankees do right. I still feel being sure. inside the system personally, uh, but there are still some things that they need to improve. And I think it's good that they're being honest with that. Yeah, um, you bring up Houston. Um, you know, the Yankees used to be the team that used to knock out the same teams year in and year out. You know, after they lost to Seattle in '95, after that they kept beating them out of the playoffs. A's, same thing. Uh, twins all the time and something flipped after 09 probably around like 2012 ish 2013 ish and it just bottomed out at that point the closest that they got to anything obviously was 2017 um we know how that ended and that was one of the teams that felt really good because you had the veteran presence but you also had the younger guys and it was just a really good mesh of that and you had guys from different sides of the plate and it wasn't so right-handed dominant. And it was, you know, it was a team that could play like a full game of baseball and they've drifted away from that. And we all know it, they know it, and they really need to change things because like you said, they're not the evil empire anymore. And I hate that so much. They're not feared. Uh, People make fun of them all the time. Now they're like the butt of a joke, um, almost as bad as the Mets now. And it's like, no, mm -mm. not quite there. Well, not not quite quite. there. But There's a lot of history like, there. Yeah, but it feels like, you know, especially with them not making the playoffs and being eliminated and people were making fun of that. And I said, yeah, it's the fifth time since I was in college that they've missed the playoffs. Um, so, yeah. We have uh, one more quote, Stace, that we wanted to get to here. Uh, again, mm-hmm. this is from, uh, from NJ.com. This will be in the episode description as it always is. I'll have it linked. It's free. You don't have to have a, a subscription or anything like that. Uh, this one says, the final report will be data-driven and purely objective. None of its bo- uh, none of it bodes well for the Yankees analytics department, which is obsessed with exit velocity and spin rates and has advised Brian Cashman to make its disastrous trades for Joey Gallo, Josh Donaldson, and Frankie Montas, among others. It's a huge undertaking. The first of its kind for the Yankees, but so is Steinbrenner's determination to learn how the billions he spent since 2009 have yet to produce a world champion. Stacy, I've told you this in private, but I want to make this public on the show too. I am sick and tired of the word analytics being a bad word in baseball. Right. Look, changes need to be made. We have said that a trillion times on the show. I'll say it again. <laughs> but analytics being the bad word in baseball the last few years, going down to the Joe Madden stuff and the front office stuff over there in Anaheim, and now this stuff with all the analytics and the... Look, there are problems. We get that. There is a place for analytics in the game because guess what? If you just say, no, we're going to go on baseball feel and we're going to do the old school way, guess who's losing? Because yeah. everyone else has, again, caught up slash surpassed you. So just because 
the analytics currently aren't working doesn't mean that analytics are bad. They are good and they are needed in today's game. You will not win without them. Right. I just can't believe that um, the analytics department advised Cashman to trade for Josh Donaldson. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I had, I had a changes. half. <laughs> yeah. I had a half hour episode when I was hosting by myself um, and I didn't write a script, didn't do anything. I just went off the cuff and went off on Hal and Cashman, not yelling, but just, how could you do this? What What is wrong with you? What kind of a trade is this? Because it felt like it was going to be a disaster. And um, it felt like every trade that Brian Cashman made in 2022 was a disaster and it affected this season. So yeah, they really do need to change. And yes, analytics is not a dirty word at all. Um, and I'm sick of people also, I'm also sick of people bashing it because you need that stuff to run a baseball team. You can't just go out there and play baseball. You need to look at the numbers. So I, I, we want people to get away from that whole analytics is bad thing because they're not. Yeah. They just have to be used correctly. Correct. Correct. Just <laughs> like, uh, you know, you can spend your money in every way under the sun, but you got to spend it correctly. We've talked about that a lot on this show, too. You've got to sign the right players. You got to mm -hmm. make sure the team fits. You got to have the clubhouse attitude that you want. You got to have the right vibes. You got to have the right coaching staff. There's a lot of things that goes into making a sports team successful. And the Yankees clearly need to do a lot of things to get that going in the right direction. Uh, let us know how you're feeling about that article. Again, it's in the episode description. If you want to read it in full, we want to hear what you have to say. Uh, we're going to step aside one more time. We come back. Final game in Toronto. Let's talk about that next. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a small little $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. You can't lose there. If you... If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You need to check it out for yourself, so go download it today. You can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Again, you're going to get that nice little treat for you as well. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Back here on Locked On Yankees, our final segment for this Thursday edition of the show. Thanks for sticking around, folks. We really appreciate it. And, of course, you can download the SiriusXM app today and listen to today's Yankees game. 707, first pitch from the Rogers Sentry. Uh, <laughs> last time we'll see the Blue Jays stays. Luke Weaver taking the ball. Hey, Luke Weaver. Uh, he's going to be facing off with Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett's having a really nice year. Again, the, the Blue Jays pitching staff has been really, really good this season. And Chris Bassett, notwithstanding, his last couple of outings has been really good, been super consistent, save his outing against Texas like everybody else. Every other, yeah. Uh, that one week, that one week's just like the caveat for the Blue Jays. Yeah. Luke Weaver, what was it, five and a third his last time of shutout ball? I mean, I have no idea what to expect today. Yeah, I'm I'm a little worried about that. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Again, if they lose, they win the season series. They're above or they're at 500. It's fine. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did because Bassett's a really good pitcher. And you know, you know, we we I joked about the Blue Jays having trouble hitting, and um, you know, to uh, not tonight, last night. You know, the Yankees hit a little more, thank God for uh, Aaron Judge, but. Uh, the previous game, you know, if it wasn't for Austin Wells, that game could have gone into like 15 innings because neither <laughs> team was hitting. So, um, you know, Bassett could give the Yankees some problems uh, on Thursday. And I mean, it's not going to be a big deal, but I'm interested to see what Weaver is going to do, because if yeah. he holds the Blue Jays down, they well, really have a trouble. problem. <laughs> they're in big trouble going into the playoffs. And I think they're playing yeah. the Rays to finish out the season. So, yeah. I was just looking that up. Uh, yeah, it's Tampa Bay at home. So at least they don't have to travel. They yeah. will host Tampa Bay uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wrap up at noon, my time mm. on Sunday. Um, yeah. I always forget. I have to do the math in my head whenever I look at schedules. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's really it's really interesting that Luke Weaver had that outing. It makes today very, very uh, confusing. 
because Luke Weaver throughout his career at the major league level just has not been able to put it together. He's bounced around like crazy. Um, that's why the Yankees were able to pick him up this year so late off of waivers. So, yeah, it's, it's he's he was clearly brought in as a stopgap guy, just eat some innings so we can get through this thing and get to October as healthy as humanly possible. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what he's kind of done. He's kind of done that already. He's only, what, two outings at this point? So yeah. it's not like it's been crazy, but, yeah, that's, that's what we fully anticipated. Uh, Stace, is Judge going deep tonight? What do you, what do you think? Is, is, is he, is he turned the corner? Well, I would hope so because I would win the bold prediction. So I would like for that to happen. Um, but even if he doesn't, that's fine. The, the two in the one night was pretty cool. Um, and big thanks to Garrett Cole. If Luke Weaver does have a rough outing, the complete game helps because the oh, bullpen's yeah. rested. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Everybody's fully rested. Everybody's ready to go here. This one, you mm -hmm. get that full day off and then you're heading into Kansas city. So yeah. Uh, going to mm -hmm. be, uh, hopefully it's a ceremonious end of the season with, with judge going deep a couple more times, hopefully here over the weekend. Yeah. Again, we're not going to really get a chance to preview that. Um, of course we will talk about that on Monday, the mm -hmm. final series of the year. No minors Monday. I, I do have some updates on the minor side, just for the everydayers who are going to tune into the off season and stuff. Um, you know, there were some other awards handed out. We sent up subtextures, some information about that and about Jason Dominguez's awards and all that kind of stuff. So we're still going to talk about it a little bit, but not a full fledged minors Monday. Um, yeah, Stace, it's, it's coming to an end here, especially with tomorrow's fan mail episode that usually takes up the whole show. So this is, yeah. this kind of feels like, you know, graduation goggles going on right now. Last day of school. <laughs> uh, see, now I'm depressed. You know, I, I know I was joking about how I was happy I was going to have a stress-free October and I still am, but I'm kind of bummed that they picked it up at the end of the season because it was kind of like, oh, I kind of wish I could see what they would do in a wild card series <laughs> because Yankees haven't been in a wild card series yet. So that, um, yeah. It would have been interesting because the wild card games, oh, Got they are not, man. they are not good for your heart rate, your anxiety. Um, the only wild card game I knew they were going to win was the one on October third, twenty seventeen, um, Minnesota, because one, it was Minnesota, and two, that was uh, the anniversary of my father passing away, and I thought to myself, Gus isn't going to let the Yankees lose. There's no way, none whatsoever. So, no <laughs> yep. We'll see how they do tonight. One last north of the border and then head back into the States, head to Missouri to face off with the Royals. What a, what a weird schedule, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Like, had the Yankees been in the hunt here, they would have had an easy three-gamer at the end of the year. That didn't make much sense. Yeah, it's the whole, um, what's what do they call it? The schedule. The Not wide open schedule. The Because they're playing yeah. everyone. What, what do they yeah. call it? The wide open schedule, I think, was the official name they gave. I can't think of it. <laughs> Look, I'm sick, okay? So I can't think And it's right the end now. of the season. It's the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> we got four left. We're 158 in. It's a lot of baseball, folks. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you stuck with us the whole way. If you're brand new to, hey, welcome. We really appreciate you guys checking out the show. And, of course, you can hit that subscribe button for our Fan Mail Friday tomorrow, our last one for the next two weeks. We're going to take next Friday off. So not this Friday, not the 29th, but the first week of October, we will take that Friday off. Our only off day. We're taking it. Um, so we're going to yeah. do that. But, of course, make sure you tune in for tomorrow's episode as we uh, – say goodbye essentially and then of course on monday we'll officially say goodbye once it's all said and done man crazy but don't worry we still got five episodes a week even in the off season don't worry guys all right make sure to check out the uh, episode description for subtext make sure to check it out as well for that nj.com article how you're feeling about the audit stuff cole judge do you think he's gonna get the 40 i want to hear about all that in the episode comments here on youtube and that's gonna do it for today's locked on yankees I've been your gracious host today. Pinch hitting for Stacey Godzillius. I'm Steve Granato. We will see you tomorrow.